Do you want to look like an MMA fighter? It might surprise you on how easy actually MMA fighters train in general. This is something I learned from training with UFC champion George St. Pierre for six months in Montreal, Canada during my finance studies. What you want to focus on is basic bodyweight training, otherwise known as calisthenics, because this is great for building lean muscle mass where you have a lot of muscle and a low body fat percentage. Less is more. So yeah, years ago I was a student from Finland obsessed with finance, fitness and mixed martial arts, MMA. I had the opportunity of a lifetime if I studied hard the capital asset pricing financial models and got good grades in finance, I would get the opportunity to fly to Montreal, Canada to go for an exchange at the prestigious Heck Montreal University. But it wasn't that that was my main reason to go to Montreal, Canada. I was more interested in going to train at the legendary TriStar Gym where UFC champion George St. Pierre trained under legendary coach Firas Sahabi. So I studied hard and got good grades in school and oh man I was so excited. And at first I didn't get in but I had to reapply and get better grades. So finally came the day when I actually got the letter that I was accepted at the university. Then one day when I went after school to sign up to try start the legendary gym, I was so excited going to practice. And then one day George St. Pierre walked into the gym as I was training on the heavy bag. He nodded at me and what a moment that was. At the time he was ready to fight Johnny Hendricks, an absolute monster in the UFC with one punch knockout power, known to be a vicious guy to finish with knockout his opponent within seconds of the first round. I knew that it was really an interesting time to see George in person. I remember that not all practices were available for everyone, but somehow I managed to sneak into the pro MMA and the class was very strict. No one was allowed to film any sparring and on the whiteboard you could see a list of names of monsters that GSP was about to spar, like Rick Story, Rory McDonald, if I remember correctly. Also Lam, one of the most decorated Muay Thai fighters in the world, were present there to help out George with Johnny's knockout power. But yeah, Lam, despite being an absolute monster Muay Thai fighter, was actually a really nice guy. Someone who I actually got to train with years later in Thailand. But anyways, back to Montreal and the training classes at TriStar. So me just being there, a random kid, and I got to train with legendary elite fighter and the legend himself, George St. Pierre. Not every practice was of course with him, but the classes that were with George St. Pierre, GSP and Firas Sahabi, the main coach, were amazing. And I took note on the most effective training mechanics from them. And I was especially interested in discovering what makes one a truly versatile athlete, which GSP could be described as. I took especially note to GSP's and Firas's mindset. And I continued to study their ideas over the years afterwards from interviews and so on. And their mindset were based on simple yet effective tools. And I would say it's very much in the spirit of Bruce Lee that adapt what is useful, discard what is useless and add what is specifically your own. Then of course, personally, life came, work in finance, and so on. And almost for half a decade after this, these ideas that I learned got buried away. But as over the years, I didn't have as much time to train during the years of studies when I could go to the gym, lift a lot of weights and so on. I started to revisit these ideas that I learned in Canada. And I remember that Firas, the mastermind coach behind GSP, said that he could always show up to practice without wasting any mental energy. And I thought that was like really profound and that he never never trained to be sore after practice. The ideas of having a strong mind by making exercise second nature through simplicity was a tool that rang a bell to me. I needed to keep my health in my busy life. So here's what I learned and how I actually applied the teachings into my life. So first of all, mental toughness. In addition to a less is more approach to training, the mindset of a champion was really surprising to me. That despite being the greatest of all time, GSP's biggest strength, but also weakness, was 
his obsessive mind. I think the biggest reason to GSP being able to channel his obsessing nature was thanks to his coach Firas. He had some real nuggets on the importance of finding ways to take pressure of expectation. And I think we can apply this also into our own lives. GSP always felt a huge pressure and fear before a fight. Other fighters felt positive, so it's really dependent on the fighter that how the individual perceives a situation. You could, for instance, perceive a meeting stressless. Another person in the meeting could be sitting right next to you and feel extremely tense and stressed. I think GSP actually said in one interview that the trick that he used to take some pressure off was to think how insignificant he is in the universe. For instance, I think he said he encountered an old lady in the street and talked to her just before his big fight. And he realized that she didn't know who he was. So he realized that he's actually not truly the shit. Of course, in MMA, he's one of the biggest stars, but for everyday people, they might not even care. So that's one takeaway if you have something big in front of you. Maybe take some pressure off. It wasn't just clear and dandy for him because he truly had an obsessive nature which allowed him to be great. Also, his obsession of a loss against another fighter from the past was a great example that he had to deal with. So in the past, he embarrassingly got knocked out by Matt Serra, one of the biggest upset fights in UFC history. And to come over this loss, which a fight he should have won, because he was a lot more skilled, but he started to believe into his own hype. His coaching team or a psychologist had him carry a brick around everywhere he went. And he just carried around the brick. At first it felt heavy, but if you of course carry around the brick every day, you will realize it's pretty heavy to carry around and you better off just get rid of it and start thinking about what's important for you. So that's a great lesson that you can think about that you release the brick and start looking towards your goals and future. And you can just take the brick and throw it in the river. Now, of course, it might sound stupid, but you releasing this brick and negative energy can have a huge impact. Maybe you don't literally have to carry around a brick, but getting over your hurdles can help you get focused on your goals. So on this carrying a brick around mentality, maybe it's not just that easy to get over some hurdles that you have. And Firas Sahabi has talked about Marcus Aurelius saying, check yourself when you see yourself becoming negative, see how fast you can bring yourself back. So yeah, fighting is not just physical, it's also mental. And the same is for you every day that you should realize how much of your own candle are you burning in the moment. What can you actually switch off and just become more fluid and relaxed? So when you think about this mindset of Firas going to practice, he's talked about how it should feel like you're just going at night to the fridge and getting something. And this is also something that Conor McGregor has talked about that he started to think about this, that when he spars at the gym, that's actually pushing his comfort zone and it started to become too comfortable so then he went into local tournaments and then that felt hey i'm just walking to the fridge at night so he was like hey i want to become a ufc champion i started shouting out and he was very confident so you can see this a huge contrast between these fighters but at the end of the day here is the confident that matters that how can you perceive the moment so take the same mindset when we think about fitness and general health it's really important for you to lower the bar for training so you can show up every day i don't care if you're a beginner advanced or a really busy person. It's about showing up and if you show up very tired and you're stressed about the workout, that's not a good way to go about it. You should have this mindset of going to the fridge, going to the workout. I think that's something that helped me tremendously over the years. And I would say that this is why I personally have a burning passion towards all types of movement, a path that I started over 20 years ago. And I think exercise is really important as we sit so much every day. And there's a huge surge in people being overweight in general. To me personally, calisthenics has been the best choice. It doesn't take too much time. You can get in incredible shape in no time and you can recover fast. And that brings us to the training mechanics I learned from training with the elite fighters. So looking at GSP as an athlete, he has amazing ability to execute complex moves and chaining, for instance, of wrestling, Muay Thai, boxing and so on with very much of an ease. And it really comes down to basic mechanics that are stacked upon each other, chained together perfectly. Timing, distance, strength, endurance, and coordination. What you can see from George is that 
he focused on mastering the fundamental movements in the spirit of Bruce Lee that said that he doesn't fear a man who's practiced 10,000 kicks one time, but fears a man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. And we see a lot of, for instance, in CrossFit or personally when I've been training in Jiu Jitsu or MMA, that in one lesson you might have 20 different techniques. And instead, I think it's much more important to really obsess over the basic mechanics. And you can get very excited about just the basic push-ups. There's so many details and how, for instance, the elbow is, the shoulder blade. There's many, many fine details in these moves. You don't have to rush through them. So that's what I think that before moving on to more advanced techniques, start with the basics. The advanced moves are built upon the basics. So over the years, personally, I've been obsessed over the 80-20 rule. That's how this channel actually got born. Now, it's about taking the most basic exercises and obsessing over them, saving a lot of time. This has allowed me to become athletic in my 30s. Of course, I'm just an average guy, but it has given me a lot of success. And at the same time, saving a lot of time, training two to three times per week. So fundamentally, it's important to focus on the basics with a mindset of quality over quantity. So I think about these exercises that they should be universal to many sports that you can apply them as well as to your normal life. So you want to use compound exercises for strength, hypertrophy and endurance. Then personally, I do cardio or boxing, BJJ or skateboarding once per week. This is great for coordination, cardio. So there you have it. These are some of the surprising effects I found from training with UFC champion George St. Pierre, as well as mastermind coach Firas Sahabi. So really simplify and have a effective training regime. By you focusing on this, you are able to very well transfer your body and mind. So if you're interested in learning more about my training style philosophy, fitness, finance stuff, make sure you check out the links below, sign up to my newsletter and good luck on your journey towards becoming a versatile athlete through simplicity. Thank you for watching.